G'day Virgil Pilots, today we're going to look at energy and renewability. This is where you examine your airplane's performance, this will help you maximise it based on the conditions you're in and the band that you're facing. Airplanes will manoeuvre using mechanical energy, and it's this energy state which indicates how much energy is available for you to manoeuvre. You want to think of your energy state as money in a bank account. You can save it to use later, or you can spend it now to do what you want. Your overall energy state is made up of potential energy in the form of altitude, kinetic energy in the form of airspeed, and chemical energy in the form of fuel if you have an engine. Now I've included this formula here to show you how your energy state is related to your altitude and your airspeed, and also that you can actually have two airplanes at different altitudes and airspeeds, but they could have the same energy state. So what I'll do now is I'm going to show you an example of this using the F-18 Hornet. What we're going to do here is look at the conversion from potential energy into kinetic energy. So on the F-18 we're flying along straight and level at 9,000 feet, 250 knots with a constant thrust. If I pitch the nose down and begin to descend down to 1,000 feet and the energy state remains constant, then we're using the formula earlier, the altitude we lose will convert into an extra 200 knots. This will give us around 450 knots of total airspeed. The main takeaways from this demonstration that you can trade your altitude for airspeed and vice versa. You should be considering both altitude and airspeed when you're judging a banner's energy state relative to your own because this will help you determine when you're going to conserve your energy or when you want to exploit it to improve your position in a dogfight. Your energy state changes when adjusting your power or your thrust or if you're performing any kind of maneuvering that's going to change your speed or altitude. You're going to be gaining energy when thrust is greater than drag, so examples of this could be if you're climbing with a constant or accelerating speed, or if you're performing a level acceleration. On the other hand, you could be losing energy, in which case the drag is greater than your thrust, which occurs, for example, during high G turns and sacrificing altitude, or as speeds above your level flight maximum after completing a dive. How fast your energy state changes, for better or worse, is called your specific excess power, and this is abbreviated using the term P sub S. When you're flying, your P sub S will either be negative and you'll be losing energy, positive and gaining energy, or it'll equal zero, in which case you're maintaining energy, just as if you're maintaining a constant altitude and airspeed. An airplane's P sub S measures its energy maneuverability under specific conditions, and this is visualized on an energy maneuverability diagram. This is what we're going to talk about next, so if you need to understand the basics of an EM diagram, you can go to my lesson for BFN number 3, Turn Circles and Turning Room. Alright, so here's the EM diagram for the Spitfire LF Mark 9, under the conditions in the top right. Here we have the max speed in purple on the far right, the G limit up top in orange, the lift limit in red, and the sustained turn data in blue. But what we're going to do now is look at this diagram in terms of its specific excess power. In this green shaded region, this is the entire performance envelope for the Spitfire under these conditions. And the blue line, as we said earlier, is your sustained turn data, which means you're maintaining a constant speed, altitude and g-force. What this means is that your specific excess power along this line equals zero because you're maintaining your energy and there's no acceleration. So we can break this down further. Underneath this line shaded in red is going to be where your specific excess power is greater than zero. So remember that this region is where you're going to be gaining your energy. This will give you the options to either start climbing, or you can increase your g-force to improve your turn performance, or you can increase your airspeed as well. Now above this the same turn line is going to be a region where your specific excess power is less than zero. So this means that you're going to be losing energy and this is a region where you only get instantaneous performance. So in order to maintain your performance in this region, you need to sacrifice altitude and energy in order to do so. So the takeaways from this are that if you're flying above the sustained turn line, you're going to be losing energy. And if you're flying below the sustained turn line, you're going to be gaining energy. And the further away your g-force is from the sustained turn line, the faster you're going to lose or gain that energy. Alright, so we're going to have a look at this specific excess power here in principle um, inside of the airplane. That way it gives you a little bit more of a good idea of how this works. Um, so we're going to start off at 360 miles an hour and we're going to enter a 3G turn. So on the graph there, this is actually in the instantaneous region of performance. So 
This is where our specific excess power is going to be less than zero, and this means that we can't sustain a 3G turn in this region. So what happens is we end up generating a lot of drag, which can't be counteracted by the thrust that we're producing, and the airspeed is going to start decaying. So I'm going to start speeding up the time here. So you can see that even though we've been at full power, the airspeed has been steadily decaying throughout this 3G turn. And then eventually, what ends up happening is your airspeed is going to stabilize. This is going to be the region somewhere between 310 and 315 miles an hour. And uh, this is the point at which your specific excess power is going to be equaling zero. Because you're going to be sustaining the turn at this G and this particular airspeed. So now on the uh, other side of the graph, this is going to be in the region where your specific excess power is greater than zero. And you can see that we're maintaining a 3G turn at 214 miles an hour, but we're at a reduced power setting. Um, so you can see there the boost is actually not at max power. And if I was to start increasing this boost to max power, um, we're going to start accelerating. You can see the airspeed starting to increase. So we'll be trying to maintain a 3G turn throughout this. I'm going to speed up the time. And um, the airspeed is going to start increasing, even though I'm maintaining the altitude and trying to approximately keep around 3G during this. Um, so just like previously, uh, the airspeed is going to start reaching the point of around you know, 310, 350 miles an hour. And this is where the specific excess power is going to equal zero because you're going to be sustaining this turn at this power setting and this g-force with the level turn. So remember that if you are operating this region, um, you know you have that option to accelerate, and you can also climb at the same time as well. So it is possible um, if you're not pulling too much g, that you could actually climb and accelerate at the same time. So when we're looking at the, um, these kinds of EM diagrams, then they show the airplane's performance as a snapshot in time based on those conditions. Um, but these can become really useful when you want to make comparisons to enemy airplanes, and that's what we're going to have a look at now. So by being able to compare energy maneuverability, you can evaluate any airplane matchup, and you can learn where the airplane's strengths are, and where the bandit's weaknesses are relative to you, and you might be able to try to exploit those. And it's your relative performance which helps determine how you want to fight using your energy. All dogfighting is energy fighting, um, but it's about energy management and you have two main styles to achieve that. You can act as what's classically called an energy fighter. This is when you're prioritizing high speed and vertical maneuvers to help conserve or improve your relative energy state. And then there's the uh, angles fighter, which is someone who prioritizes exploiting their energy state to improve their turn performance, position, or achieve a gun solution. Uh, when you wanted to conserve or exploit your energy depends on the airplane's matchup, skill level, and the overall situation and you're not restricted to fighting in only one of these styles. They can fluctuate throughout a fight. Um, if, when you want to learn energy management, a lot of pilots will learn it just by experience over time and by exposing themselves to different situations. Um, but if you happen to have EM diagrams, if they're available, this can give you a head start on how you should be fighting depending on your situation. So again, here's the uh, Spitfire LF Mark 9's EM diagram if you wanted to review that, and we'll go into it in a bit more detail now. And uh, here are the highlights from the EM diagram. Now, these numbers are pulled directly from the graph. So you can have a look at these numbers now for a few moments, and then we'll look at the 19K4. So here's the EM diagram for the BF 19K4 using the standard DB engine. Under the conditions in the top right. So you can have a review of this for a few moments and then we'll uh, have a look at the highlights of this EM diagram. So here are the highlights for the BF109 K4. So here's the important data pulled uh, directly from the graph, which you can review now. And then in a few moments, we're going to have a look at these two graphs overlaid on top of each other, and we're going to look at the relative performance. So here's the combined EM diagram for the LF Mark 9 and the 109K4. Um, the first thing you may notice is the top speed differential. So the 109 has the advantage here for top speed, which means it's able to extend and get away from the Spitfire as long as it has enough initial separation to do so safely. So now looking at the corner airspeeds for both airplanes, 
Uh, you can see that the 1 and 9 has a higher corner airspeed than the Spitfire does. And because both of these airplanes are going to be limited by the pilot's ability to pull a maximum of 6 Gs, um, and assuming both pilot skill levels are equal, then if both airplanes are trying to maintain corner airspeed, then the advantage is going to go for the Spitfire because it's able to maintain a uh, higher degrees per second turn rate and a lower turn radius. So looking at the lift limits for both airplanes, uh, we can see that the Spitfire's lift limit is higher than the 109. So this means that the low speed fight is going to favour the Spitfire more than the 109 in this case. Here we're going to look at the uh, specific excess power for these airplanes relative to each other. Above the region that's shaded, this is uh, 480 kilometers per hour and higher, the specific excess power that's positive for the K4 is larger than that of the Spitfires. So this means that the 109 is able to retain energy better in this region and the Spitfire is going to lose its energy faster. So this makes it the region where the K4 wants to stay in in order to fight against the Spitfire when it can because it's able to utilize its ability to retain energy and the extra airspeed to uh, use vertical components to fight against it. Now if you continue following the sustained turns of both these airplanes, they cross over and this is the point around 480 km per hour or approximately 300 miles an hour and uh, this is where the advantage switches from the K4 to the Mark 9. Now as the fight starts getting slower below this airspeed, uh, the Spitfire is going to start retaining its energy better and the 109 is going to start losing energy faster because as you can see that the uh, specific excess power regions start diverging and um, the positive region for the Spitfire ends up being much larger than the 109s by the end. So if a Mark 9 is able to get close enough to a K4 while it's slow in this region or force it to become slow then it's going to be a bit more difficult for the K4 pilot in order to escape. The last consideration um, on this is thinking about the maximum performance of these airplanes. So because both the airplanes are limited to 6G their maximum turn rate and minimum turn radius is going to be the same um, down until the corner airspeed of the K4 at around 400 km per hour. And as the fight slows down to that 400 km per hour region, um, the K4 is going to find it harder to sustain that airspeed without giving up more altitude than the Spitfire because the Spitfire's excess power region um, that's positive completely covers up the K4's region. So both airplanes are going to try and maintain their corner airspeed at the maximum G as long as possible. And then as they start nearing the grey out, they're going to have to relax the amount of G they're pulling while still attempting to slow down um, in order to maximize their turn performance. And then once there's no more altitude to give and the airspeed starts bleeding off, you can see that the Mark 9 is able to hold a higher sustained turn than the K4. So if the K4 is trying to match the Mark 9's turn performance at this point, then it's going to be losing energy and slowing down even further, which will further exacerbate the advantage of the Spitfire. So this is a region that the K4 would rather avoid, and one the Mark 9 wants to be in. Here's a summary of the performance numbers um, relative to each other, so you can see who has the advantage in what area. And up next we'll look at the energy management style uh, that's used between these two airplanes. So the uh, style that the 109K4 is going to utilize against the Mark 9 is one where it wants to conserve energy. Um, it has the high top speed as we talked about, so it can use that to dictate the fight and extend away from the Spitfire as desired. Uh, the key airspeed is going to be 480 km an hour because that's where the sustained turn data crosses. Um, so if you end up defensive, you could try and force a descending fight to increase your airspeed as well as the Spitfires above that 480 km per hour to help equalize the turn performance advantage. Um, another option could be to use your flaps a little bit. So this can help you by lowering your stall speed and increasing the lift limit, but it also increases your drag. And if you are in a descending fight, this can force the Spitfire to overshoot if you're on the defensive. And even though you are wanting to conserve your energy a lot of the time, it does not prevent you from exploiting the energy you have to help improve your position, defeat a gunshot, or create your own gun solution. Now for the Spitfire, its style is generally going to be one of exploiting energy, um, it has a slow max speed, so you're not going to be in a level speed chase with the K4 for very long as you won't catch them. Uh, 300 miles an hour is going to be that key airspeed, so you want to exploit your energy as needed to try and force the fight below 
that 300 miles an hour because this is your region of improved turn performance. Um, you can use it to take away separation from the 109. This will help make its escape more difficult. Now if you're fighting at high speed, uh, you can try and utilize the vertical component to climb. This will help you slow down faster and improve your turn performance, as well as conserving the energy as you need to. Just remember to be mindful of overshooting while in a descending fight, because you have higher airspeeds involved here, which is going to lower your turn performance relative to the 109. So after watching this video, um, you probably want to see other aircraft matchups like, you know, a Mustang versus a 190 or F-18 versus an F-5 or something of that nature. Um, I have been testing aircraft like that, but uh, nothing's quite ready yet. Um, I plan on making something publicly available, but the testing takes a long time, so I may end up needing to ask um, for help from other people to get that done. If you did happen to like this video though, uh, remember you can be a subscriber and use that notifications icon so you can see them. Um, there is also my Patreon which you know you can see these videos in early access as well as um, some other content that I'm working on. As always though, remember to fly safe and check your six.